Terry. Of course, yourself, Mike, you've, uh, to some acclaim, I mean, I've known you a while now, but I still can't believe you're actually in Wurzel Gummidge with John Pertwee. I mean, that must have been a blast. Well, I tell you, that was such a coup. I mean, I mean John's a proper actor. He's probably done theatre and training. I mean, I've done a, a bit. But I learned to act in commercials over about 10 years. I did loads and loads of commercials. I did the Blue Ribbon Blues. You remember that? I just can't get enough of those blue ribbon blues and the dog chasing me up. Anyway, I digress. What, did you, what was the question? Um, <laughs> well, Wurzel Gummies, you know, of course. Oh, yes, Wurzel. Uh, and are you being served as well? So in, oh, so in between this sort of life as this sort of uh, um, monolithic sort of rock figure, you're doing all these other... other. No, the trouble, the thing about the pop is uh, Robert Stinker went past and I was on my arse. I didn't, I would like a man with no legs. And so I finished up fixing cars. I was going all around Wandsworth with, with a 30 quid open back, uh, or at least a, a state car that it was so bad. I mean, it was the days before MOTs. You looked at the passenger side, you'd actually see the wheel through the rotten floor. And I used to <laughs> take all the tools, I used to see all the tools in the back of the car and go around fixing people's cars in the road. That's how bad it was, having been a pop star and all, all those tours with the Beatles mm -hmm. and everything. And, and so, uh, and, and then out of nowhere, a pal of mine, Johnny Wells, said, there's a, he said, listen, there's an agency starting up. They're looking for photographic and actors and stuff. He said, you've been on the telly. They go and see them. So I went to see this new agency, uh, JCJ, they were called then. They're now called Galloways, and I'm still with them. And uh, anyway, they took me on, and for the next 10 years, I did so many commercials. But one of the commercials was for TV Times with a, a director called James Hill, who did Born Free and the Bellstone Fox and stuff like that. Lovely man. Mm. Anyway, he directed this commercial, but he couldn't get it. It was actually filmed in a shop in a, 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 quite a small news agent. I was the news agent, and the star of the commercial was this little little tiny kid with a massive bag of papers, you know, the TV Times. And so um, I was sort of directing this kid because James Hill couldn't get near enough. And he saw this working with kids, because I had two of my own anyway, and so uh, as I was leaving, he said, oh, he said, I might have something for you. Um, and all I heard was the word Wurzel. And I thought, oh, well, he knows I sing. It'll be with the Wurzels. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so uh, having made that mistake, then I got a call from uh, Marion, his assistant. She said, oh, Mr. Hill would like you to come down to Southern Television to read for the part of the father in Wurzel Gummidge. And I thought, oh, Wurzel Gummidge, because I'd read the books. What was the, who wrote it, the woman? Wurzel Gummidge, um, oh, it'll come you. to me. Anyway, so so I, I knew what it was then, and I went and read for the part, and, and I was shitting myself, because I'd never done anything like that. And uh, this was proper TV, big bucks. And anyway, lo and behold, he, I, I said, because he's looking at me and I said, I, I don't look old enough as, for a sort of dad figure, do I? Because you work for the dad. Uh, and I didn't. I, I was playing, always playing uh, less than my years. And he said, don't worry, we'll fix it. So he stuck a moustache and a cloth hat and a pair of glasses and that was it. The, the character was born. I did four series. It was the best time of my life because I had the most seasoned actors to learn from. So, it, yeah, brilliant. And then from that, uh, I got IB served. What's that? But it's Wurzel Gummidge. Oh, there you go. It's Barbara, Barbara Euphan Todd. Good Lord. Hey, Barbara Euphan Todd. Why do you, you couldn't remember her name? I don't even know her name. <laughs> Barbara Euphan, E-U-P-H-A-N Todd. Right, Wurzel right, Gummidge. Yeah. Barbara Euphan Todd. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was my introduction to acting that with the grown-ups, and then I being served came out of that. But it's all we you all know it's all wheels within wheels. I mean, I having done Wurzel through a, a commercial, which was a miracle to happen anyway. Um, then I met um, John Pertwee, who took me under his wing, and he sort of he nurtured me and, and gave me all sorts of tips. And he was a fantastic raconteur, John Poetry. He just, he traveled the world, done everything. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, I told him 
I said to him one day, I said, I said, John, I, said, I don't really know what to do. I said, my agent is keeping my money. And he said, what? He said, get rid of him. And he was furious on my behalf. And I said, oh, oh, right, okay. Anyway, so uh, he said, he said, what, what you'll do? He said, uh, I'm going to ring uh, Richard Stone, my agent, and ask him if he'll take you on. And you write to him a letter, because it all had to be done very formally. And so I did that. Anyway, I interviewed Richard Stone, who was one of the nicest men I've ever met. And he had Frankie Howard and all these major stars. And uh, and so he took me on, you know. And, uh, and it was through that I met David um, Croft, who wrote Wurzel, uh, I being served. He rang Richard Stone said, uh, he said, Richard, he said, I've got a problem with, um, um, oh, Christ, Mr. Lucas, what's it, uh, Trevor Bannister. Uh, the problem, Trevor, and he can't do the next series. We do, we, uh, Jeremy and I decided to do another series of Ivy, so we, we haven't got uh, uh, Trevor because he's busy. He said, have you got anybody? And I'd only been with Richard about four weeks. He said, I've got just the man, and that was me. <laughs> I mean, talk about, you know, stepping stones in a rushing stream. I mean, bloody hell, that was me. And so there you are. That's how I got into acting, and uh, I've looked back. <laughs> I've looked back. And uh, Mike, you're, you're the only surviving member. Is that right? I don't know. No, there is a, the, the canteen manager, is, bless her, is still around. And again, another name that escaped for you. It will come to me. And then there are the lift girls and stuff like that, you know, that used to do, operate the lifts and all that. So, uh, but it was a, it was a, a set to behold if you were to go to Ivy Serve set. When you, when you went around the back of all the dummies in all the, the posh clothes, you get this lovely silk suit and all that. And, uh, go around the back, it's, it's cut right down the middle, a big strip's cut <coughs> Because the the uh, extras and people used to come in and pinch the clothes. <laughs> so they come in the next morning with all these new dummies there, <laughs> and so they had to cut all the clothes up at the back, and uh, that was just one of the things. And because the lifts, they, there was no such thing as a lift; it was just worked on ropes and uh, the doors. So there was no you just climbed up some stairs and came out of the lift with your suit on, and that was it. If only the public knew. Oh, no. Yeah. No, no. Michelle, Michelle, were you, were you a fan of either series? Oh, yeah, I, yeah. More so of Are You Being Served, you know? Uh, you know, ladies' underwear coming down and, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> it's so I'm glad that they ever said that. You just made that up. I did make it up. I did make <laughs> it up. But yeah, just, it's so yeah. funny. When you go to America or India, it's still on. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But the trouble is, I didn't do the first seven series, so it's really me that's on there. Although I think they've been showing them recently somewhere. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. 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 They got three and six in there. Yeah, it's iconic, America. isn't it? With John Inman and, you know, Mrs. Yeah. Slocum. Again, that was another thing. I mean, when I did Wurzel, it was it was really terrifying because they were surrounded by Jeffrey Bale and Megs Jenkins, I mean, John Perch, who's there, Norman Byrne, all these seasoned actors. I'd done nothing. And then with Ivy Serve, which I'd watched avidly for years, and uh, suddenly I was in it, and I was mm. on the shop floor thinking, ye gods, <laughs> I felt like going sick all the time because I was so... Yeah. Oh, and I just got on with yeah. it. And they were lovely. They were lovely. Sorry. Sorry, I thought you were on Sorry, it had God. Wendy Richards in it, and, of course, she was on the mic psalm, come outside, wasn't she? Yeah, she yeah. Was. Yeah. In fact, Wendy and I did a sequel to that uh, while out of Are You Being Served. What was I've it called, it. Mike? Come Inside? <laughs> 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 oh, you're such a wag. Oh, Mrs. <laughs> oh, Mrs. <Mrs. laughs> I'm, I'm all embarrassed now. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, uh, but it was still Come Outside. But uh, Charlie wrote it, um, Charles... I said, what's the other bloody, his names is terrible. I hope you others get the same problem with names as I do. Yeah. And, anyway, he rewrote it. It was a sequel where uh, Mike Sarn had had his way with Wendy and uh, this okay. was 20 years later and there was a boy in the in, in obviously Mike Sarn's son from that time and I was taking Mike's part. And so this was her boy. And what was his name? Um, 
Tarquin. She called him Tarquin. Tarquin, yeah. <laughs>